Hello everyone, welcome back to QNAP Live broadcast from our headquarters here in New Taipei. I'm Rezon and today here with me is our product manager Norman. Hi. Thank everyone. you for coming Norman. Hi. So Norman today is going to bring us a very interesting topic. He's yes. going to introduce us to a new feature, new product, updated actually, new version, right? New version. New yeah. version. Brand new version. And many new things with it are coming yeah. today here. So let's re reveal the topic for today, which is a the Hybrid Backup Sync 3.0 yes. QDDoop. Yes, we have upgraded the uh, Hybrid Backup Sync from 2.1 to 3.0 mm. and also bring everyone the new technology for the data reduction. Mm -hmm. It's called the QDDoop. QDDoop, yes. very, very good name. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, so uh, how we discover the all new Hybrid Backup Sync? The first, I will introduce how the QDDoop can bring us for the data to technology and okay. have the great reduce of the your backup and the, your resta restore time. Okay. And uh, and also I will identify the importance of the multi version backup and also the key factor for the multi version backup. Okay. Okay. And uh, the third one, Q dedupe etc. Is the the whole new the new feature new feature the, new application okay. that QNAP want to provide to every user who use the hybrid backup thing for the for, for the backup okay. and then now with the QDDP chat tool you can bring your backup file everywhere because the uh, QDDP chat tool have supported a uh, multiple platforms already okay. yes and uh, next is the TCP PBR. Uh, we tend to do a, a data reduction. It's okay. it's one to that your backup test can run more faster. But in other perspective, we can also want to accelerate your transmission speed mm -hmm. while you want to back up your data to the public cloud or the remote site. So with the uh, TCP BBR it can help you to accelerate accelerate the backup speed. All right. Okay. And uh, the next part, I will uh, introduce the, the the relationship between the hybrid backup sync and the cloud object storage. And the uh, final part, I will try to explain again the complete backup strategy. It's a oh, three to one. Three to one strategy. Yes, and also the final final one, voice from enterprise users. Oh, okay. It, uh, we have a. Uh, uh, receive many suggestions oh, from yeah. a user that they want to do a backup but with some problem that they cannot okay. finish it successfully so we want to improve our product for our users yes right? so this this uh, new products actually are coming from the feedback and communication that we have with our clients and yes. with our users so together we managed to build uh, a better a better, uh, better backup, uh, hybrid backup sync version. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so here we can see the difference between the hybrid backup sync 2.1 and uh, 3.0. Okay. We can from the first thing is the cloud synchronization. Because we have separate, uh, as we know, the cloud service have two kinds, yeah. two types of cloud service. One is the file type storage and uh, the other one is the object storage object, yeah. and uh, for this to type normally user will use the uh, file storage for their data sync yeah so we have implemented in 2.1 is supported all the drive uh, the, the file type drive type cloud service for the cloud synchronization and for the object storage normally user will use it for their data backup mm -hmm. because the cost is much cheaper yeah it's a uh, very convenient and suitable for the user they want to uh, uh, backup or archive their data in the cloud yeah so we have support the cloud backup for the object storage and uh, the number is uh, 13 13 yeah okay but now in 3.0 we don't dis distinguish these two kind of oh i uh, see so we have all in total in one totally yes total. So, so we have 22 22 and it's increasing Sin yes increasing and this 22 uh, cloud provider we also uh, we provide synchronization mm -hmm. both the synchronization and the backup 
see. And the backup is the multi-version backup. Oh, it this is the multi-version multi backup. Multi-version backup, okay. yes. Okay, so the third part is uh, we support the QCD technology. Okay. Uh, I will explain more detail later in the page. Now, uh, for your information that the QDD technology is used for the data reduction. Okay. Yes. So in 3.0, we support the QDD, and uh, the next TCP BBR. Oh, yeah. In 3.0, we support TCP BBR technology. It help you to accelerate your data transmission speed. Okay. And uh, the final part is the scheduler. In 2.1, only uh, one task only can set one single schedule. Mm -hmm. But in 3.0, up to 30 schedule settings can be set for one oh. task. Oh, so you, you don't need to uh, set up uh, maybe multiple tasks, but on only, uh, only for one purpose. Okay. To do the different time backup, but you only need to set only one yeah. backup task but with multiple uh, schedule settings. Okay. And uh, as we know, uh, the data is uh, growth very rapid. Yeah. Yes, but they have some problem where you need to preserve uh, preserving your data. Okay. Yes, because uh, transmission may take a long time and that cause the bandwidth resource are consuming mm -hmm. because you're long, long, long time using the bandwidth, right? Yeah. It, and uh, it will take effect on your daily job. I see. It's a problem. And the second one is uh, backup, backup job is take too long to achieve the intensive backup. If you want to do more version backup, mm -hmm. it means you need to take the backup for half day, one day, maybe two day. Okay. But once your backup data is too large or your backup speed is too slow, the lad cause your backup test cannot finish in time. Okay. So yeah. it's the problem. So you yeah, need to, uh, to uh, maybe you have some risk of your data loss. Mm. Okay. Okay. And other problem is that, uh, because internet. Original. Uh, generally, the we said the internet environment is not so good as inland. Right. Yeah. Yeah. In area we have the inland, uh, we have much better uh, transmission speed yeah. because the packet loss situation is not happening so, so mm -hmm. many. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, while you want to back out your your data to a remote site or to the cloud, the problem is, if your internet is so slow, how you can do this? Okay. It's really a problem. The, yeah. This is an issue actually. Yes. Especially if you have large amounts, so like a large pass. Yes, so we have some solution okay. for you want to, to back up to a cloud. So the final part is without any data reduction pre-processing, mm -hmm. it will cause the increase of your storage cost. True. Yes. Okay, so why we want to develop hybrid backup sync 3.0? The key is to because, uh, why we come up this key? Backup file must be small okay. and the backup speed must be fast. Why? Mm -hmm. Because if we got more smaller backup files yeah. and uh, much more faster of the, uh, the transmission speed, yeah. that will conduct to one conclusion that you will get smaller data loss risk. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Because you can have more backup versions and that you can while your your system is uh, shut down, the downtime it cannot be too long. Okay. Uh, because you have faster transmission speed, you can recover your system as soon as possible. Oh yeah. Yes. And uh, if because we now we suggest the user to use the remote side or cloud side to do the remote backup. Yeah. Yes. So if you your data is all on the cloud, mm -hmm. but the internet speed is not too fast, it's a problem. Yeah. So, so this. All these reasons why I come out that uh, we need to provide user the, the all new uh, all new solution yeah. for fixing this kind of issues. So it's kind of the happy backup thing 3.0. So here, 
Maybe now we will see the technology of the QDedupe, which is QNAP deduplication. Yes. And how mm -hmm. it greatly reduces backup and restore time. Yes. By that we mean like uh, reducing the time and s increasing speed. Uh, because the core idea is we help you to reduce the data, yeah. your backup data. So it means fewer more it can because the data is small. Yeah. You, uh, you need you don't need to take a m more long time to yeah. transmit to backup or restore. Okay. okay. So uh, as you can see in this uh, diagram, it's the uh, uh, diagrams come from the Gartner report. Yeah. Uh, Gartner will release this report every annually every year. Okay. Yes, and the report is target for the uh, storage technology. So here list all the famous or mainstream mainstream uh, technology mm -hmm. for storage technology, and mm -hmm. we can see the the rate data deduplication yes the red square yeah the red square data deduplication now it's on the stage of the prime term of the productivity okay it means now it's highly been accepted oh, by the uh, storage uh, vendor or the, the sound manufacturer okay this kind of technology helping user to reduce their data and highly accept it okay. and they uh, expect that this kind of technology will be the mainstream uh, maybe in two to five years. And we already have it. Yes, <laughs> yes. Because we, 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 we have some feedback, we have a lot of feedback mm -hmm. from the user and also we very care about the mainstream of okay. the data storage. Yes. To bring the newest things in the... Yes. So uh, the technical point is that the uh, data deduplication is a broad label. They can analyze the file in broad label and uh, tear apart the file into block and okay. store. So that uh, the the same block between files or in the files yeah. will be removed, yeah. not not to be safe. Okay. So it can help to save a lot of storage space. It does. Yes, and uh, as I mentioned, uh, it's not only compare the blocks inside the file, it also cross the file. Cross file block comparison. Yes, All it's right. a, the, the very key point. Okay, so this kind of technology is very suitable for the three major scenarios, including the big application, virtual tab library, storage server. Okay. So as we can see, this kind of scenario is all using for the data backup because data backup may contain many of the uh, the, the same data okay today's yeah. backup tomorrow's backup do you see uh, there won't be so many difference yeah. between these two versions so uh the core part of these two versions will be the same so if you can have some small changes and then to do it with the blocks yes so you can only keep only few data difference yeah okay yes okay so now we come out our q dedupe technology for the data reduction okay so the future highlight is the bar level to analyze and the compression your files mm -hmm. and uh, the second one is the source side deduplication framework. The the opposite technology is called de destination side data deduplication. Okay. So what's the difference between the source side and uh, destination side? It means uh, when you execute the deduplication procedure. Okay. Uh, for the source side, we will do the deduplication from the source before we sending out this of data to the destination okay. but as we mentioned the uh, destination site deduplication is do the deduplication in the dis uh, in the destination target yeah. while well, they receive all the data in the in in the device they will schedule to do a deduplication on this device oh i see so it's a difference yeah and uh, the uh, advantage for the source side dedupe is that we before we send it, 
we have to do the deduplication, so we can save a lot of the bandwidth. Yeah. Uh, and the, the uh, definition side deduplication is different because they don't do the data reduction before sending. So they still send a lot of data to the destination. Yeah. So it costs the bandwidth are very concerned by this kind of transmission. You see, so the source side, we are one of the, or maybe the first NAS uh, vendors that using this uh, source side yes, data deduplication. Uh, yes, in NAS, we have several deduplication technology, or oh, I said uh, data reduction technology. We yeah. are the first source side, we are the first for NAS. For source side, we are the first yes. providing the NAS. Okay. And uh, the second advantage is space saving. Space saving. Okay. Because you have done the deduplication and the data have already reduction. So after the transmission, before we send into the space, it's already already small, right? Yeah. And the, okay, so it can bring the space saving. And the third, the third advantage is that we can support multiple cloud providers because all the deduplication is done by the society not in the destination. So we don't need to worry about uh, which destination we want to back up. Is the destination support the deduplication? No, no worry about that. Okay. Yes. And uh, as uh, the many reports has said that more than 80% of enterprise has adapted the uh, cloud solution. Yeah. So why we mention this report? Because it's important. Many of the enterprise have to adopt this kind of the architecture. So that if they want to do the data reduction, they need to do it by source. Yeah. Because multiple of the, many of the destination didn't support the data reduction technology. Yeah. So if you done all the, uh, done all the reduction in the source, you need, you need just send the, very small part of the data to the destination and they're very compatible with the different backup destination. This is a good solution, I, I think. So if there are like uh, this huge number of enterprises that have the cloud solution mm -hmm. and we provide the source side uh, framework yes. for the data deduplication, there, there is a good solution for having and uh, reducing uh, the, the time, yes. so to make it faster. And they don't need to change their infra or change the cloud service. Okay, yes. so they don't need to change the cloud service uh, provider. Yes. They yes. can keep it. They yeah. can keep it because okay. all done by our NAS. All right. Okay, so here's a table for the comparison between the three different data okay. reduction technology. The traditional one is the file compression, yeah. like the zip, yeah. <laughs> so the, the compression level and scope for the file compression is by byte and the, for single one, a single file. So as the file compression, they will scan a file. Yeah. If they have some send, send bytes, they can have some algorithm to remove that and uh, transform to another zip format. Yeah. But it's a for single file. Okay. How? So uh, we can see the next is a single instance storage. It, uh, the compression level is file level and the scope will be a specified disk area like you see your, your C drive. Oh, yeah. If you apply the single instance storage technology in your C drive, it means in your C drive, if there contain two files with two names because they, they can have the same name in the, in the same mm, storage, yeah. right? Uh, but these two different name files got the same content. Okay. Only one of the file will be stored. Yeah. Yes. So it can be save a lot of the space, right? Yeah, it saves the space. Yes. And the most important difference between the single instance storage and the data duplication is that we change the compression level from the file level to the block level. Okay. So only the same block, only the different block will be keep in the storage. The same part will be removed. Okay. So we smaller the compression level from the file to block is more finer 
finer label yeah. for compression. It's more detailed. detailed. It's like it, com it decompresses everything, defragments yes. the file. We tear apart the file. Tear apart like the Legos. <laughs> yes, yes, like Legos. And then just keep the, the blocks that are same and the blocks that are not same and then make the difference. Yes, but just like if you got the file A and the file B, yeah. and the file B will tear apart to the blocks and the stand of the block of a file B won't be kept because yeah. they already we have it from A. the A. Yes. Yeah. Only maybe two of the blocks from file B will be added to. there. Yes. Okay. So uh, it has more good performance in the compression rate due to the compression level is more finer. And uh, as we can see the suitable scenario, file compression only for a single file. Yeah. Single instance storage for the cross file. But data duplication, both single file and the cross file will gain the benefit okay. from it. Okay. Here's the actual test results from our NAS. We in in this uh, test we want to impress that QDD is good. Yeah. It will bring you a data reduction and have a great effect on your on your source data. But if you want to do QDD more efficient, okay, you need the pair by the, uh, you need the help from a hardware device. Yeah, definitely. Yes. Like the hard disk and the SSD. Yeah. The difference between them is the SS speed. Yeah. Yes, IOPS is totally different different level yeah so if you adapt your SSD in your NAS for your QD dupe you can see the transmission speed it the the the, the result shows is the transmission uh, the throughput speed yeah so you can see with the SSD the speed can uh, meet to 162.9 megabyte per second All right but for the hard disk it's only got the 68.4 Also the pattern here where you can see it's like the yes. SSD is more flat. It's like more consistent. Yes, more consistent because yeah. the the read data from the from the from the storage yeah. is much faster. Much faster. They don't need to wait. Wait for read and the transmit. Yeah. And wait for read and analyze transmit. <laughs> okay. So we have the backup time spent is the key factor for multi-version backup. So we're going to talk about multi-version backup. What is the multi-version backup? Can yes. you explain to us? And okay. see maybe the scenarios there. Okay. Right. So uh, multi-version backup helps you can recover your data from damage, in, but in yeah. the right way, not the wrong way. <laughs> okay. So you can see from this diagram, the V1, because we are a software company, we have the, some demo from the software aspect. Yeah. Yes. So you can see we have the core version one for backup, and the core version one, the status is, is Q normally. Yeah. And after some modification in V2, it's the current code, but the code is failed to execute because yeah. some of the modif modification caused the. the, the the, the, file to, to the fail. program failed. Right. Uh, failed to execute. But if we got, we only got one single version. Yeah. We can only back to the V two, right? Yeah. But it's still broken. But we got, if we got multiple version, we can uh, restore our system now back to V one. Now, your, your you don't lose the complete file. Yes. You don't lose everything. So and you have a. The, the the first priority thing is you let your system run normally, right? Okay. Your system back downtime is down, downtime is uh, very short. All oh, right. Yeah, the first priority is this, but the second one you can have more time to fix what you have done in V two. Okay. So it's the benefit from the multi multi version backup, mm -hmm. and uh, but the most important thing. Uh, after you this uh, after you know what the multi version backup can bring you, you may think, uh, if I can do as much as more backup as possible, yeah, is, is, is the right thing. Yes, of course, it's right it thing. is right. Okay. But if you want to do more of the backup, you need to make sure every time backup can run normally, 
can finish because if you got a lot of data need to back up, mm -hmm. you cannot fi uh, done the backup job in time okay. before the next scheduled task. Schedule tasks start. Oh, it's here. Don't ignore the hidden risk. Yes. Uh, yes. So when the data amount of the backup task is too large to be completed in time, it says that the next scheduled task will be canceled. Yes. All right. Makes so, sense. So the, the key is to, you need to speed up the execution of your best backup oh, task. Okay. But how how to do it how to do it okay, let's see yes and uh, the the way we to the indicate to measure how your backup strategy is good enough or complete enough is uh by rpo and rto and for rpo is uh to measure the frequency of your backup versions mm -hmm how short you can recover back to maybe one day ago, two days ago, the short is better, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. the shorter the time. And the, the RTO means how long will you, will your system, is, if the disaster is happened, how long will your system back to normal? Okay. So the, the very short is better. So how to you short, shorten this to indicator so the first one was rpo yeah. recover point objective yes and the other one recover time objective RTO. Yes. okay so the two tips for you to help you to uh shorten this to indicator okay. the first is you need to speed up your transmission speed so lqnap have a complete 10g 25g 40g solution uh -huh. yeah. for you to accelerate your transmission speed and the second you got the fast speed, but if your data still large, yeah. with, with great amount, you still need more time to handle this. True. So we have provide you the QDT technology is help you to reduct, uh, reduce your transfer transferred data amounts. Okay. Yes. So with these two, if you combine these two, two then you can uh, shorten it. Yes. All right. Okay, so it's the way, uh, it, the, this slide is show you how the QUDDUP can help you to reduce the data for the multi version. As you can see, the first backup, the whole file has tear apart to the box. Yeah. And uh, they got the, the demo is the 12 block to 4. Yeah. And the, but you only need to transfer the four, four for the bug to the destination for the backup, and then you can restore the whole file by the four block. Okay. okay. And the second backup, you, you can see the difference. They have the blue one. Yeah. Light blue. Yeah. And so the, yes. It's only uh, the difference between the first backup and the, the second block. Uh, the second backup is this uh, light blue block. Oh yeah. So on, you only need to back up this block one block. Yeah. Only. And the third, the third backup, the difference is the red block. The red block. So you only need to back only one block. So this is also very fast if you go by block. Yes. Okay. Because the data amount is very 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 small. Yeah. In the yeah. one block. <laughs> yeah. So we can see we have uh, some real test on right hand side. Mm -hmm. The first. Uh, we have to test the source is the virtual machine image file okay. because many enterprise you got your virtual machine and uh, you need to back out your virtual machine you need to back out the image file and the, uh, the original size of the image file is uh, 15.48 gigabytes All right. and after our deduplication in the the the, the size of the file size in the destination is redundant uh, reduced to 7.59 gigabyte it's really small yeah. right? but with the second one after you use the image for one day and you want to do it do the backup again mm -hmm. the second backup you still need to back up uh, 50.49 gigabyte no you don't need you don't only need to be this, this destination yeah. size only 7.82 uh, yes so only seven point eighty two gigabytes of data will keep in the destination but you got two of the version can be restored 
Yeah. So so you can see they take a lot of uh, a large effect on the data size mm -hmm. because of the QDD. Okay. So now you want to show us a demo of yes. uh, the duplication and the multi-version. Multi yeah. Yeah. So let's go to the demo. Okay. So, all right. So do you hear here is have our new Happy Pika Sync. Is the uh, look very different from the old one, and we now we start to, uh, we start to create a backup job. Mm -hmm. So I use the virtual machine image. Okay. For the backup. Yeah. Okay. So, what are you doing now? Is this so uh, now? Uh, we now we choose the source for backing up. Okay. Okay. So. So here are the, a lot of the data need to back up. So I will choose the. I see. Here, I found the VN image for backup. So after your virtual machine mm -hmm. backed up your data to a NAS, now you got your VN image in your NAS. Now we start backup to a remote NAS. Okay. We got another NAS in the office. So because we need to follow the backup strategy. Yeah. Feature one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have already added in the list. So I will create a new folder here okay. for store my backup. Norman backup. B A C K K U I P. Yeah. Now we finish to select the backup destination here, and we click finish. That's so now very fast. Yes. It, uh, no, no, uh, we didn't down down the backup. Yeah. Yet. But uh, now we can see this is the summary of yeah. your backup, the source, the destination. And next step, we need to set up the schedule and the uh, version backup because we want to show the user how we do the multi version backup. So we can see here, version backup now is off. Okay. We change it to on. Enable version management. Yeah, it's a turn off. All uh, right. Backup. So you just call it there? Yes. And now we also have the detect function is enabled mm -hmm. because multi version need to consume a lot of a lot of uh, storage space. Yeah. So we defaultly want that if you enable your multi version, your Q is enabled function also. Will enable also. All right. Yeah. Okay. It's all your job information here. Then we. Oh, yeah. Create the job, and now we start to back up. Back up now. Yes. So uh, every status of this job mm -hmm. can be read from the report. Oh, we can see everything. Yes, what is everything. happening here? Yes, including the elapsed time, mm -hmm. uh, the, the skip file or transfer file here will update real time, and uh, they also have. We also provide some information like the history. Okay. Because one job you may run every every day mm -hmm. so you can see every uh every day every day status from here okay. and uh, also the log the you log. can see from here okay so we wait for the job to finish okay so it's running we, because it's a 10g we use the 10g to connect this to 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 nas so yeah. it won't take a too long time to finish so we can see we put the data to the public normal backup in another in other NAS. All right. Okay. So you can see. You can be here. Hey, normal backup. Normal backup. So you can see the. Ah, there's the file. That's the file. Up. All right. You notice the extension. Of yeah, the, the extension is QDFF. Yes. Is the file format of our deep mm -hmm. uh, our deep data. 
Okay. And now all of the data from source NAS to Disney NAS, they will transfer the format to DD format. So okay. you cannot read it directly from from here. Yeah. Yes. But we can read it somehow. <laughs> yes. So a short time the oh, okay. We see done. the report. So you can see the data size mm -hmm. we transfer the start time, the end time, mm -hmm. only take two minutes for Maybe 50 less than gigabytes. Two minutes. Yeah. Only take two minutes. I think it's less than two minutes. <laughs> yeah, less than two minutes. Yeah. So it's really fast. Yeah. But it's only one version, right? Yeah. And now we show you how to create the second version. Mm -hmm. But um, as I demo, I, we don't change the, the image file. So I will replace the Im image file Okay. By B2. So you will replace the V2 yeah, with the original one. All right. Overwrite. It's right, just we'll like it fast. you edit the file every day. Yeah. So the file will have some change. Okay. That is the si simulation, the scenario. Okay. Okay. So now the overwrite. Executing, yeah. And after it's done, we will do the second backup again, and we will see the multi version can be restored. Okay. Yes. So we will have a uh, two versions. We will have two versions. All right. So, yeah. Uh, while the time your disaster happen, you want to restore, you gonna have two, two versions. versions. Yes. You have a backup plan. Yes. <laughs> Normally we don't do ah, it's finished, so okay. we done a backup. Normally we, we won't do it manually by multi version. Mm -hmm. We will schedule schedule it, it yeah. Yes. You mentioned the scheduling and yeah. it can be up to thirty times. Yes. So the second job the extrusion time may not take too long mm -hmm. because we apply the QD dupe. Yeah. So only a few date few of the data will be transferred to the remote NAS. Some of the blocks will be. Some of the blocks, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Because so, uh, it need take time to calculate, mm -hmm. analyzing the file. Okay. So the status update won't be text too fast. Oh, that's over. Oh, done. <laughs> <laughs> so, when you finish the sentence, it's, it's yes. over. Yes. Okay. So I, we, we can see the job is done. And uh, how we make sure our backup is multi version, then we do restore, right? Yeah. So this, this job is for the for what we have done for the uh, for the backup mm -hmm. and now we directly click restore. Oh, yeah. So it will fill up all the including the source and destination from the job we have already set for the backup. And now we can set which version we want to restore oh, from here. So this menu will, uh, li this page will help you to select the right version for recovery. So right. for first you can select the time because we, we pick up now. Is, all right. You can select maybe. Oh, this is a timeline. Timeline, so yes. You can select the time from okay. here because we only got two versions for today. Yeah. And the, the second, the, the second step is to select the version to, to oh, you can choose the version here yeah, which one do you want to choose the version all right and the third is to choose which which data you want to oh, recover. you can go into details yes all right so it's very helpful for the user to select the right data for recover mm. i think it's also very specific like to tell you what specifically exactly what you want to do which data you want to yes, recover because it's really hard if you have multi version of your backup it's really mm -hmm. hard to find exactly the data you want to yeah. restore because you have a lot of time a lot of version in one time one yeah. day yes so the ui will help the user to say the right one yeah this is very user friendly also yes so our demo the part one is finished yeah okay. We go back to the PPTs. Yes. All right. So 
live level uh, demo first part is finished. So now we're going to see the feature that is in QDDoop, a very powerful feature that we have, a new one, yes. the extract tool, which makes your backup data more visible and portable. By that, uh, maybe you can explain into more details what is the advantages of extract tool. Okay. Because we have provided you the deduped function for yeah. the, the data reduction, but after uh, data has been deducted, you, you need to do the recover for mm -hmm. the future assets. Okay. Yes. So we also need to pro we, we we noticed that so we provide a deduped extract tool, so and it support multiple platform like Windows, Mac, and the Ubuntu. Linux. Linux. All right. Yes. So it help you. You can bring your backup files in every platform because you can read it yeah. directly from that platform. Yes. So it's a reason why we provide this all new tool for the user to use. It's uh, the same meaning like the unzip. unzip oh, okay. Tool. Yes. But this is for the extension QDFF that we yes. saw earlier, right? Yes. All right. Okay. So what is the Oh, QDFF. Yeah. It's a file format private from the QNAP. Yeah. Called the QNAP DDoP file format. And uh, it's used for storage the DDoP data. So up every data in this QDFF folder, you can unable to see the file directory structure, including the file content. You cannot read it. It's not readable. And uh, all the file all the data inside the QDFF, you need to extract, extract it before you need to access it. All right. Yes. Okay. So, uh, it's the reason why we need to provide another tool for the user mm -hmm. because, as you know, every data need to be extract or restored before you use that, but. In the convention backup solution, you need to restore the backup data to the source, then access it. Yeah. It consumes a lot of time, including you need to transmit from the destination back to source, and after that, you need to some procedure to restore your data. Yeah. Time, time, time. Time consuming. Yes. So this uh, DDoP tool is help you. You can restore the DDoP data everywhere. Because we have provided the win Windows version, Mac version, Linux version, mm -hmm. and the second, uh, we support the file preview function. Before, uh, because if your backup is multi-version backup, yeah. it means you got a lot of version. But if you want to restore a uh, restore specific version, but you don't know which version is you want, uh -huh. you need to read the content of the data, right? Yeah. So we provide the file preview function for you. Uh, simply click the file you want to preview, double click and the file will be shown up. It's like here, the like slides. Here. Yeah. Yes. Let's see. And uh, it helps you to can see the difference between the two versions. Oh okay. Yes. And the final part is that we provide a function of fine recovery. Originally uh, the backup data need to be restored package whole package mm -hmm. uh, before you can add only single file inside but if the backup file is more like the one gigabyte you need to take a long time to restore so with the file recovery it's very friendly to a user you just need to restore only one file you want to see you want mm -hmm. to use from the backup so it's called the file recovery. File recovery yes Okay, so uh, with the powerful tool of the QDDUP and the QDDUP extract tool, mm -hmm. you can bring your backup data everywhere only by your single USB drive because the, the data amount, data size is very small yeah. and the, you can extract LAN in every platform. Okay. It's the whole scope of our QNAP DDUP solution. Okay. Uh, uh, we can see the first part, first column in the left left side. Yeah. All the data, all the data have uh deduped by NAS in Taipei. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. and it can be back up to the local NAS in Taipei office, maybe office too. Yeah. And also back up to the remote NAS or the cloud. cloud yeah. So after you done the backup, all of the data in your NAS can be it is duplicated. Yeah, yes, it is duplicated data. So if you want to uh, read it or asset, you need to recover. So we will have the function in the fast station, mm-hmm. but it will be released later, not in current version. Okay. We will have a function for you in the fast station. They you to you to uh, extract or preview your uh, deep data okay. directly on NAS. So it's the NAS solution for you to look at the deep data. Or you can use the hybrid backup sync yeah. for restore. Then you can access the data. Okay. And uh, if your data is backup to a cloud, how could you to access it? The QDDP help you can let you to install it in the cloud, like the AWS. Mm. They have provide some service like the remote desktop. Yeah. So you can install the QDDP extract tool in the remote desktop, and then you you uh, pull back your your backup data from the S3, the, the storage service, yeah. to the remote desktop, then you can directly extract the, the backup data mm-hmm. and uh, see the what's inside. Oh. And the, the what benefit that we want the user to use it in the cloud because it can have a more faster transmission speed because all in the cloud. Mm-hmm. Yes. And uh, after the duplication of data is very small. So you can carry it everywhere by your hard drive, USB, or even you can access it from the same bar, NFS and FTP or mail. By mail, you can send it out. <laughs> yeah. And after you got the, 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 the deep data, you can uh, you can extract land or, or restore it mm-hmm. by our QD deep tool in every platform, Windows, Mac, Ubuntu. Mm. Okay, it's a whole picture. Yeah, it, it actually depicts everything. It describes the whole process on how to use the QD yes. du- uh, deduplication. Normally, uh, the manufacturer uh, or the vendor of the backup solution will tell tell you you need to do the backup. But they don't think more that how you to access yeah. your backup data. They don't provide you the details. Yes. All right, so now we will see the user manual on how to use the extract tool. tool. Right? Yes. All right, let's go. So, right. you can see it's the UI from the QD Deprecation tool. You can directly click the QDFF file, mm-hmm. and uh, we will help you. If we, your computer have installed the QD Deprecation tool, okay. the, the QD Trap tool will ot- uh, open automatically and import your DDP data inside. So after double click the DDP, uh, QDFF file, you can see all the file has shown on your window of QDP mm-hmm. QDP tool. Okay. And if you got multi version, you can see all the version in the left columns. All the version will be lit by the date. Okay. And you can select select only one file for preview, very easily. Yeah. Single file for preview. Like the, our demo, it show the PDF content mm-hmm. from our DDP data. Okay. And uh, for restore restoration, you can select single file, or single folder, or the whole QDFF for restoration. Oh, okay. And we have some reminder to remind you. Okay. But because uh, the deep data is very small, after the restoration, the the size will become very large. Oh, okay. So we will remind you, uh, the restore size might be, might be uh, uh, a lot of size. Yeah. You need to select uh, the right the right space to store it. It says here also we, they will get this reminder here, right? Yes. Oh. So. So to the TCP BBR, which you were mentioning in the beginning, is the platform to accelerate the transmission speed. 
especially in the internet environment. In the internet environment, yes. for the cloud and for the cloud backup yes. suite. Right. So, uh, what is BBR? BBR is the Google design for the TCP, mm -hmm. and it's a congestion control algorithm, totally different from conventional. Why uh, Google want to study and design this kind of algorithm? Because the modern network is different from conventional. Mm -hmm. They have some different, like the the uh, buffer in your switch device. They may cause some delay of your packet. But mm -hmm. the old connect uh, conjunction control algorithm can only estimate the the quality of the internet by the packet lost. But mm -hmm. it's not enough. Uh, in the TCP PBR provided by Google, they will estimate the real bandwidth in real time. Okay. So it have more way to estimate the current quality of the internet and uh, control the speed of the pack packets. Packet. So packets might not get lost. Yes. Okay. So you can see the right hand side. They have to picture the TCP before BBR and TCP BBR. The horizontal line means the time, the vertical means the bandwidth. Mm -hmm. So the traditional one, they, the, the curve is uh, very slow. They cannot meet yeah. the, the full, full bandwidth speed. speed. But if you adopt the, the TCP PPR, you can see the packet send speed can reach the real bandwidth. Okay. And uh, here is our uh, test result with the TCP VR because we can enable the TCP VR in our edge hybrid backup sync. Mm -hmm. So if uh, the demo is that uh, the source is in Taiwan, QNAP okay. NAS in Taiwan, and the destination we we use the AWS S3, but the bucket is created in uh, yeah. Europe zone. Hmm. And uh, the location, real location, is in London. All right. Yes, because it's really far destination yeah, between far. Taiwan and then London. So you can see, if we don't enable the TCP PBR, the the transmission speed is uh, one point nine yeah. mega per second. But with TCP PBR, the the speed can rise to eleven megabit megabyte per second it's a really yeah, huge it's a big difference yeah four to five times increase yes. and the, you can see the curve of the uh, disabled tcp vr and enable tcp vr uh -huh. it's really similar like the tcp vr have provided yeah, yeah. The, in the earlier slides <coughs> yes so you can see the difference that uh, the without the tcp vr they cannot reach the maximum of the bandwidth yeah. but with the even you've got the large bandwidth, yeah. but you cannot use it. You that. cannot reach. So with TCP VBR, if you integrate it, then you can reach it. Yes. Right. But we suggest because the TCP VBR is much suitable for the WAN, WAN, W A N, yeah, when, wide when, area, yeah, yeah, wide area. But it because of it can detect the packet loss. Mm -hmm. But in LAN LAN environment, mm -hmm. seldom seldom situation to have the packet loss. Yeah. So you don't need to apply the TCP PR for your LAN work. Okay. Okay. Uh, I said the TCP PR can make the enterprise hybrid cloud architecture more robust. Okay. Why I said that? Because you can see from the left picture, the private cloud framework. Uh, in conventional, uh, the company or the enterprise will set up their file server like this kind of framework. In Taipei, we have one NAS. Tokyo, New New York, mm -hmm. Beijing have each office have only one NAS, and we connect it via the VPN. Yeah. But you need to the IT IT guys need to handle a lot of uh, network environment issues. Yeah. And also the speed is not too fast. But with the hybrid cloud framework, we can use the public cloud service as the central. All right. To connect this satellites NAS together yes and uh, 
between the public cloud and the NAS, they, we also provide the TCP BBR support. Right. So that can accelerate your transmission speed. Make faster. Okay, so now we are going to see the cloud object storage. Yes. So uh, cloud object storage is slightly uh is different from the file file type or drive. We use a drive type storage because all the file storage in the cloud object storage will become an object. Mm -hmm. So you cannot directly access object. Right, so it need a uh, true media, intermedia, to transfer your file to the object while you write you you, you send it to the cloud, mm -hmm. and or transfer back from the cloud to NAS, to transfer from the object to file. Mm -hmm. So HBS can be that rule. So it uh this rule like the file storage gateway. So. Uh, if you want to access the file from cloud easily, we will HB Happy Bear thing will help you to transfer the object back to file. If you want to write something into cloud, Happy Bear thing can help you to transfer the file to the cloud. Uh, to the cloud object. All right. Yes. And now we have completely integrated the file and object type cloud service. So the lab left tree. Yeah. Right. It's the file storage. The right, it's a uh, object storage, and now we have already support twenty two public cloud service, okay. and it's still increasing, and uh, both of the file storage, object storage, we also support the synchronization and the backup function, and uh, the most important thing in two point uh, hybrid backup sync two point one, we only support one version backup. Mm -hmm. But in 3.0, we have support the multi version backup. Yeah. So then you don't need to worry about how, if you want to backup all your data to the cloud, it's a good solution. Okay. Okay. And uh, we have seen the total solution of our QD dupe. And uh, I have mentioned if you want to extract your tool, if the if your backup data in cloud, what will you do? You don't need to download it to a local site and to extract You just need to deploy your QD dupe extract tool on the cloud. So the best way we have demo here is you we take an example from the AWS because mm -hmm. they provide this kind of service. And the set step one is to deploy your AWS workspace. It's it like the remote desktop. So you just apply the service and enable the service and you got the windows on the cloud. And after you set up all the workspace, you can download our QD Deep Extract tool from our download center mm -hmm. and uh, install it. And uh, how do you how could you to access your data store backup data store in the AWS S3? You can use the third-party S3 client tools like okay. the CloudBerry okay. and uh, you can use that to access your uh, backup data in S3 and pull them back to the remote desktop and uh, after all the data is back to the remote desktop you can use the extract tool mm -hmm. to extract them Alright, so now we have the second demo Yes. which is a cloud for multi-version backup and uh, restore with the QD dupe extract tool yes right. okay so here I will show you how to run the QD dupe extract tool on the AWS workspace okay so the first step is that we need to I can show users. The here is the AWS workspace service. Okay. I just apply and Windows 10 from from the workspace. So I download the client. The I download the client. Alright. Client tools provided by Amazon that can help me to 
access the remote desktop. Oh, okay. Yes. So now the remote desktop is ready for accessing. Okay, it's open. Mm. It's much faster yeah. than you open your <laughs> computer if you got the net network. Yeah. Okay, so it's the desktop of the workspace. Mm -hmm. uh, initially, you, you won't have any application especially they have default one like they have the firefox for you to access in the internet yeah. and also the internet environment has been set up uh, set, set up down in the workspace so you can directly use the file uh, you use the firefox here mm -hmm. to download the cloudberry all right and the, the cloudberry also provide the viewer for amazon f3 or Azure, Google Cloud. Uh -huh. So many of the data store on this kind of uh, storage space can be accessed directly by the Cloudberry. And after I have downloaded and installed Cloudberry okay. previously in our workspace. So, but now because we didn't uh, let the QDDP track to online now, mm -hmm. so I just put it in my AWS S3 bucket. Oh, right. So here I demo, I will pull back what I have back up, what I have back up and the tool, extra tool from the AWS S3. Okay. So here is my, my computer and I select the, here. New storage account. New storage. So before you access your S3, you need to create a AWS S3 account mm -hmm. here enter your authentication information and you can connect to it i have already done it so i select the one and it will list all your bucket have created in the in the cloud okay. so i put my data in the nomen hbs you can no see HPS yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so here's my backup data here, the QDF, yeah, QDFF. and just directly pull back to my local restore mm -hmm. restore folder. Pull. Just pull it there. Okay, yes. All right. And you can see the oh. speed is very fast. Okay. For Twenty. Yeah, it's fast. What I have tested, it can reach to uh, 50 megabyte per second. Yeah. So it's really fast while you access the data on the cloud. Yeah, it's going so to what I mentioned, we want to provide a cloud solution for user for accessing their backup data from cloud directly. And uh, at the same time, I want to, to I have put some tools Okay. For uh, re review the preview the data and extract the, oh, the okay. data here, including the Seven Zip, Acrobat Reader, mm -hmm. and the, the VLC for video player, yeah. and uh, all these two I will put back here. So here I got the backup data and also the tools for recovery and the viewer. Yeah, and uh, now directly in my remote desktop I oh, can yes, D drive right. restore tools. The first oh, I will yeah. in uh, install the Q Q D dupe tool. Because it's very lightweight so it may not take a long time to, to install. install. Except the terms of license, uh, the agreement Yes. Alright. Oh, it's fast. It's, okay. it's a lightweight. Uh, yeah, lightweight. Tool. It's done. Alright. So now you can see our QDD tool is here. Okay. Oh, you, you select the region. Select region. Because we have a live update, mm -hmm. you need to select region. Okay. So here we open the file. Alright. So where we put the file is in D. In Restore. Restore. DFF. Yeah, DFF. Yeah, you can see a DFF. Alright. Okay. 
the, the extract tool the deep is. tool the, the deep data have already imported in this tool so you can see all the file directory structure and the file content you can see directly from our extract tool mm -hmm. and i have put some 4k video here <laughs> so if you want to preview the data okay. directly that's vegas okay oh you just double, double click. click double click all and right. you because in the 4k data is very big yeah it may take a little time to do the time recovery for your preview mm. so after the pre uh, extract is done then corresponding application for prayer auto okay automatically open and you can see your data directly and this is for the preview part from the extract tool yes All right. so uh, what i show the user is our qtd extract tool can easily help you to preview only yeah. one single file it's e very easy yeah or you can extract all of the tool uh, all of your dedup data back you can check what is inside yes. before extracting yes. and everything and uh, the other thing i need to mention is that if you your data is back up to the cloud mm -hmm. the best way to access is to put the your extract tool on the cloud yeah because you don't need to download all your data yeah. back to your nas or your computer yeah this is actually very useful since you can install the qdup uh, extra tool in uh, amazon desktop yes. in the workspace so as you mentioned you don't really need to download and uh, you can see the again. internet speed is very fast yeah and it's <laughs> very fast so <laughs> it's very useful to have it there why not yes all right so we'll go back to the powerpoints yes and uh, we have the three to one backup strategy yeah. the famous three to one backup yeah, strategy. So back to the uh, back, back, back our core idea yeah. is how to keep your data safe mm. the best way uh, i mean the practical way practical way practical is the three to one backup strategy yeah. yes so yeah. the best practice for your happy backup architecture is to you need to apply both the uh depend on you you need to apply the three to one strategy adapt to your exist infra and your already applied cloud service mm -hmm. you don't need to change that because it's very suitable for the hybrid cloud architecture and uh, you need to have the offsite backup maybe uh, maybe via the private or the public cloud and the three you need to adjust your backup location according to the confidential of your data okay the final part you if you have the identification technology can be supported you should use that because it can reduce a lot of data before you sending your data to uh, another cloud all right yeah and uh, it's the whole picture of the qnap solution for your three to one principle uh, strategy yeah yes uh in the local we support the uh, time machine and the netbed replicator yeah. is uh pro is uh for provided the from the qnap you can back up your nas uh, your your windows pc your mac to our nas mm -hmm. after all the data on nas you can use the hybrid backup sync to back up your data to remote nas or the local nas even our new product tr double zero four double zero yeah, four as an exter external device yes mm. and uh, all of these backup can be supported with the QDD all right. encryption it's very important you you smaller the data size and also keep your data very safe all right yes and uh, uh not only the local part we can also back up to the uh, remote nas mm -hmm. and the cloud both the file storage and, and the storage, storage. So we have, uh, as mentioned earlier, we cooperated with our clients, with our uh, acquaintances. Because we have very open to help the beta yeah. program. <laughs> because we want to hear more suggestions yeah. and what they really think. Yeah, is uh, we, we if we want to provide a good solution to yes. them, then we have to listen to them, and yes. then we listen to them, and we came up with this version. Right. And the, what we feedback is to improve our product yeah. for fitting their need. Okay, so, okay. so for, for the enterprise need, they might 
have some concern about the quality of the network. So we have provided two of the feature that can help them to deal with this kind of situation. Mm -hmm. The first, we have support the rate control for each task. So uh, you can adjust the, the rate control configuration by job. This job have the high priority, you can send them with the higher rate limitation. Mm -hmm. But if this job have lower priority, you can send more or less rate for large up to execution. Okay. And the other one, you can plan the backup test schedule according to your enterprise demand. Yeah. Yes. So if you don't want your job to execute in your daytime, you can just set the valid period of time for your job execution during uh, maybe midnight. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's very helpful for the enterprise. Yeah, I think so. And we also provide a flexible test scheduler, yeah, including a one-time job, periodically, including the monthly, weekly, daily, and yeah. hourly. And uh, I think the linking one-time backup is very useful yeah. because we now suggest the user, recommend the user to use the hybrid cloud architecture. So uh, you might have the situation that, that you want to back up your data from a NAS A to NAS B. Mm -hmm. And after the job done, you want to back, back up the data from NAS B to a cloud. It's have the priority, right? Mm -hmm. First step is to back up from A to B. Second, after it's done, then to back up from data from NAS B to cloud. So the second job need to execute after the first job. So you can use the link one time backup All right. this function to select which job you want to monitor. You can monitor the job is finished, then I done my job after that. Okay. Okay. Oh you just want to this job is mainly to to be executed. And uh, we also support thirty set of schedule for per job and uh, schedule also support schedule valid interval setting. So this means you can you can set which period of time you want to execute this job. After the period of time is end, the job will be will be stopped. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So regarding to the GDPR, oh, yeah. and the, the most important is that your data need to be encrypted during both in the transmission and the data store. Yeah. So we have product transmission encryption including HTTPS, SSL, SSH, yeah. and the, about the data encryption. Client side encryption is a uh, encryption technology. Before you send in your data out of your NAS, we yeah. have to encrypt your data. Okay. And uh, the server side encryption is provided. We support multiple cloud ser service provider. Yeah. They have this kind of function that after you sending out your data to the cloud, they will help you to encrypt your data. All right. GDPR compliant. Yes. All right. So we see now the new look. Uh, we are going to see how the hybrid backup Strix 3.0 looks like the user interface. Right? Yes. Right. So here is our new UI. And this page is the over overview page. Yeah. It's how we use some icons and some picture to guide the user to know the detail of the whole uh, job, including the storage space. So you can directly from the from the point, green point, mm -hmm. orange, and the red, let you to know the dangerous of your oh, okay. situation. So including your storage space is not enough, oh, okay. or your storage, storage space is disconnected, mm -hmm. all the information will be Show on sure. by these three. Okay, the three, three colors. Yeah, three colors. And uh, regardless, we also show the job status mm -hmm. on the left hand side. My job. Right. My job here. Oh, my jobs? Yes. So you can see how your job is running. Okay. Okay. And the, the old job page will show all the jobs you have created, including your backup job, sync job all the job will uh, and restore job or list here. So you can 
see the information of the job and the status of the job and also you can manipulate to you can mm -hmm. do some action for this job like a start stop oh, okay. or do the restore directly from here and this is for editing yes editing okay yes and all you can you can see the report here oh awesome okay so this page is all job page or a storage space page so in this page it will list because we support hybrid cloud mm -hmm, many yeah. cloud uh, if you got a lot of a uh, cloud service it's very hard for you to remember yeah. uh, how much space is are left in the cloud true right so in this page we'll list the, the, the total ca capacity of the cloud and the usage space of the cloud so and let you to know the status of the storage space mm -hmm. All right. and uh, we have uh, received some suggestion from the user All right. not uh, 2.1 is good yeah. but it's not really very simple for the entry user All right. to use because they don't know how to set up the best backup task All right. so in 3.1 3.0 we have a uh, conduct the wizard for helping user to uh, to create the job okay so really easy step by step All right. okay and the uh, this we have seen in the demo yeah we saw in the, the virtual viewer yeah so it's a really good for the user only few step they can uh, very easy to find out which version or which folder they want to recover yeah yeah all right so this is uh, this was actually the presentation the introduction to the hybrid backup sync the 3.0 yes that we announced today with QDUP the uh, TCP PBR TCP PBR for acceleration and also we showed uh, from the demos that we saw how to use them how to conduct it more so how to we also were talking about the multi-version backup yeah multi-version cloud backup that we had and the extract tool that was coming with it yeah. also you showed us how to use it uh, with the amazon aws in s3 yes the way you, it's very fast to actually install the extract tool and uh, with the extract tool if you are using cloud services you can also preview the files yeah. directly from the extract tool so this was very helpful also by the end we saw that we have the backup strategy the three to one uh, qnap uh, backup strategy that we advise the people how to use it for yes. to maximize the the services also uh, we introduced the new user interface which is friendly to also new entrants and new users for the hybrid backup sync 3.0 so this uh, actually is our uh, introduction for today. This is all we had for the presentation. I want to thank Norman for being here with us. Thank you. And uh, if you want to see this video and many more videos like this, just go to live.qnap.com and I'll subscribe to our YouTube channel here and I'll like our Facebook page. I'll see you next time on QNAP Live Broadcast. Thank you. Bye. Bye.